Thanks for the uh, the interest. <laughs> so how's it going? Yeah, it's going it's going well. It's busy. You know, having a um, a record out is is busy enough um, when you're just a musician, but when you're a musician and have another full time job and other stuff, and that's it's uh, it gets a bit crazy. <laughs> But it's oh, fun. Yeah. It's exciting. And I can't really tell with the weather just because it's kind of, I can't really see. It looks like it's kind of gray skies from what I'm showing. Maybe a little rainy. It's, it's uh, well, gray skies is, it's kind of the default here in the Pharaohs. I'm right by a road, but I guess I can. Oh, that's really pretty. Yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> it's a nice it's a nice uh, area to um, where I usually stop and look at birds and stuff and get my hair blown out. Um, and uh, yeah, so it's uh, it's it's it got a little bit rainy right now and gray, but it's it's been reasonably nice weather for this time of year, actually, for, uh, the last couple of days. And so we're we're all enjoying getting um, getting a little bit longer days. It's starting to get a little bit dark now. It's around six. 6 p.m. Yeah, and uh, but uh, but yeah, approaching summer and uh, people are getting a little bit, you know, they they're they're a little bit lighter in their step and stuff like that. Yeah, for sure. Summer is when everything comes back to life and everything is fresh again. Exactly. Yeah, and especially this far north, you know, you have these really dark winters where where yeah, it it can get a little challenging for some, but. Uh, that's that's the hope is <laughs> hope is always there for sure and i know you mentioned that you know ha being a artist and having an album that's about to be released things are really busy but how do you feel now that the album is done oh it's it's awesome it's the it's the best feeling when when you know you're you're working for well actually for uh, in, in in our um situation we've been working for almost six years to get it properly finished and you know you're in the process for so long and you're kind of um pulling and, and do, doing these all kinds of compromises and working on the songs and and it, it can get a little bit painful at times and and uh tough and you start to kind of resent the songs and then you start to love the songs again and you know going through the whole kind of roller coaster um and then when you're you you get to the end and things start speeding up the finishing touches and everything and the songs actually come to their into their final form and you just you just get really uh yeah it's it's really satisfying and then of course there's a there's a period of planning after the the album is finished recording and mixed and stuff and it, it, there's always some time until you can actually release it and get people to hear it so that's also kind of there's a lot of anticipation on our part and um hopefully also on the the, the people who want to want to hear the stuff so um so now it's like just around the corner and we can't wait until you know till people get to hear it and say how much they are disgusted by it no i how much they love it hopefully <laughs> Yeah, six years is a while. So I have to ask, how many times have you heard the album in that time? <laughs> well, I mean, the thing is, it's taken six years to make the songs, but maybe some of the songs and some of the unfinished versions of the songs we heard quite a few times over the years. But, you know, it's only really picked up maybe the last two years or so where we've actually been able to form the songs and really get everything done, get the arrangements done and the lyrics get like, uh, you know, they get really focused and stuff like that. So, so uh, not all that much. And I tend to not go too much back to it and listen to it all the time because I, I also want to have like a fresh experience whenever I hear it or have, have a, have a nice relationship with the music. So I try not to, to listen to it all the time, but, but when I do, I'm I'm really happy, actually. So that's that's good. 
Yeah, for sure. So I have to ask, I know that the Faroe Islands are pretty small. What's the metal scene like there? Well, it's been fluctuating for the last, I don't know, 20, 25 years, 30 years, maybe. There are a few of these like kind of metal adjacent grunge bands appeared in the 90s. But but uh, that was really the first proper metal stuff that that was uh, put on tape, so to speak, on the Pharaohs. And... Um, and then Tuir came along, which is probably the most uh, famous Faroese metal band. They've been at it since the late 90s and still going, releasing an album very shortly. And um, so they're still they're still very active. And then we had some quite quite a quite a vivid scene back in maybe around 2005 to 10 thereabouts. Or there were actually quite a lot of bands popping up and they they released some eps and some albums and stuff but since then it's kind of died down again um occasionally a new band will pop up but it'll be maybe short-lived or it'll be a studio project or something like that but this year is kind of exciting because uh i think it's it might be the most most eventful metal year in the pharaohs uh, in a long time because we're we're pu putting out an album Tuir is putting out an album um this um local um kind of folk rock uh, metal band uh, is putting out an album and they're 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 called Hamradun they've I think their um, audience is mostly f on the pharaohs yet but I'm sure they'll expand and uh, and I know that one of my friends, uh, Black Metal Studio Project, will 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 put out an album hopefully. And uh, so it's it's actually right now it's it seems pretty good. <laughs> but we don't. Uh, it's not like yeah. We we when there's when there's uh, concerts and stuff, people will congregate, and they're still the metal diehards the from the from the scene back then, and they still keep at it. And yeah, it's really nice to see them always. But but it's not as big as it has been. Yeah, does being from there does that affect your music at all? Like, do you get inspiration from the islands, or does it make you write your music differently? I think so. It depends on uh, on the band, of course. But I mean, for Hamfer, definitely it's, and I think also it's the same for Tuir and and Hamradun. It's that seems to be <laughs> that seems to be the gimmick, you know. If we if we uh, if we get some of our kind of heritage or or uh, national identity into into the music and kind of maybe uh, present some of the uniqueness of of being Faroese or you know or coming from Faroese um, culture, that that um, that's a, I think seems to be a big strength um, for us. We we uh, were initially quite inspired by Faroese psalms and and maybe church singing a little bit um and also uh, the 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 kind of seafaring history of the pharaohs and the way of life um before the industrial revolution and everything like that the the changes or the challenges rather uh that people faced back then living on isolated islands and having very meager circumstances to procure food and um that's that's very uh, th that's probably what inspires us the most along with kind of the elements here the the weather and the of course the winter darkness and everything that that makes this place kind of a challenge to live in especially before before uh, modern amenities uh, so um, so that's a, that's a big inspiration for us yeah yeah, for sure. And then what was the first song that you wrote on this album? It's probably the third track called uh, Marosorg. Nightmare Grief is kind of the best English translation I, I managed to, to to do, but it doesn't uh, yeah, it doesn't really roll as well off the tongue as the Faroese word, but <laughs> 
But yeah, that that's the first kind of song that came to fruition, and it's also the like it it kind of clicked pretty quickly that song, uh, quite a lot of time before all the other songs, and uh, yeah, so it's it's it the the idea was quite clear and it's quite a simple idea of having the verses be sort of lullabies uh, or kind of fantastical lullabies that a parent is singing about their child hoping that the child is is a king of an underwater kingdom uh or something like that or or a queen or something like that and um but then the having the verses be like the the realization that that they've lost their child and and the the unimaginable sorrow that comes with that so it's like this kind of dual uh module song in a way yeah that sounds really cool i feel like a lot of people especially even if it's not like a child can kind of feel like that grief so they can kind of relate to something like that too yeah exactly yeah and i mean the there's always something to relate to in the song it's the feelings of loss or feelings of inadequacy and and or feelings of of yeah just having maybe failed your loved ones or stuff like that that's that's kind of uh something that that comes keeps coming back in our lyrics yeah for sure i love that so i do have to ask what is kind of like each member's role when you guys start to create an album like what is the kind of the roadmap that each member plays in the band yeah that's a good question it's um usually it will start with a riff that's or some kind of guitar um based um starting point and that will be either theodore the guitarist or 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 Aeon, the other guitarist coming up with something and then they will sit together and try to find the logical placement of that part within a song or find if it's maybe the beginning of the song try to find the logical progression from there uh how to how to move from that and then that's kind of like it's it's almost like um like a seed that like a, a, a riff seed that that uh, blossoms into uh into a stru structured song um so and then there will be like a very basic structure and then we'll you know discuss it and everybody will be involved at least this time we we were very very focused on um having the whole band be involved in every step of the way because the the album before that thompson's leekam was very much like um uh an album where especially theodore was working on creating this kind of cohesive work and creating all the arrangements um quite a lot by himself um of course with some input from us but it was it was much more uh like like a studio type project uh in a way uh and this time it's it was going to be a band project so uh so yeah everybody everybody gets in at an early stage when the riff is there or when a, a very basic structure is there i will start thinking about the lyrics and, and about the mood of the uh the song so far what does it inspire uh lyrically and um the keyboardist and drum drummer will be of course be be there straight away putting on some percussion finding the dynamics of the song so it's yeah it's it's sort of like everybody's everybody get at this time gets involved immediately um but but there of course is like a, a core of the guitarists kind of um structuring everything and creating a, a kind of a, a a red line through so how is that um i know you said normally it's like you know the guitar kind of just does everything but with this album it was like the whole band was involved how did that change like what do you think that added to this album that wasn't on the previous one well i i think um what it what it uh, especially did is that it creates a certain dynamic a certain feel to the album um that the album before does not have we we decided very early on that we wanted to do this kind of a band effort thing and change the change the method 
because it seems more re- rewarding to work as a, as a group because everybody's really good friends and we're, we're we do this mostly because we love playing together and we ha- we are uh, in our minds we're a really strong live band that's where we really shine and so that's something we wanted to put on the album as opposed to the earlier album um so um so yeah that's that's immediately that will be to me at least to my ears very audible the album is 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 live it's recorded without any click track it's it has this this uh, really good um good groove all the way through and also um we we did a lot of discussing about the songs and talked about what we wanted and what we didn't want and stuff and everybody sort of had their say in the in the songs which i think really uh, created a diversity between the songs all the all the songs i would say pretty much every song is really different from the other ones so uh so that's that's i think is is the main difference uh from the last album it's it's short to the point songs all very different from each other not necessarily like super conceptually tied to each other like the last album so and that's that's really what we wanted to do yeah for sure that sounds awesome it's always nice when you have other members and everyone's like you know giving the input yeah yeah for it's sure. it's more fun that way <laughs> for sure so on the album i i i'm probably gonna pronounce this wrong but it's track number five it's um i hamper or humper it kind of is has your band name in it is there like a specific reason behind that track having that or is it like does that i i i don't know if it's like an i but is there like something behind that yeah um well the i is is pronounced ui <laughs> so it has a line over it <laughs> ui, well which just means in like in Humford, and uh, that's how it's usually um uh, spoken if you refer to that concept the uh, Humphrey, the 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 word you say um uh, someone's been walking in Humphrey. so it's it's like um uh, traveling in one's own skin uh, is kind of the literal meaning and it just it basically means an apparition someone appearing as an apparition and that song is specifically inspired by um the these uh, experiences that people have of seeing apparitions in the wake of um the incident that the album is kind of based around which is the um it's the uh the event in in uh, february 13th in in 1915 in the village of sandvik where um where 14 men died uh trying to bring in some whales um for food for their families and uh and it it was um there was a lot of of stories around this event it happened in sandvik which is the home uh home village of of our keyboardist esmar um so it was that was very close kind of close to home to to write about um and there were so many stories about people seeing these men appear before them walking uh uh, in in kind of <laughs> wherever they were looking and in, and kind of seeing them as an as an omen of their deaths and they were they knew okay something has happened to these men so uh and since the band also is like the name is taken from there and we were originally inspired from that that kind of myth slash uh folk belief from olden times it would make sense to call the album, uh, call the the song, that kind of have an eponymous song in a way. Um, so that's really the the main thing. We could have, of course, called it something else, but I think it's it's pretty nice to have like quite a clear, especially when you're doing an album like this where it's more to the point. And I, yeah, we wanted to do things a little bit more, a little bit more direct than than uh, other albums. Why not just call it We Humphrey? Yeah, for sure. Is that like a really famous folklore there that kind of everyone knows about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. People, people really. Uh, it's it's kind of a very very well known 
um, thing that from from especially from myths and from ballads and stuff from from way way back it was it was quite common to see people in Humphrey. yeah Is, would you say like that's your favorite folklore or do you have like, a different one that would be like your favorite <laughs> that's a good question <laughs> i don't think i have a, a real favorite we've written about a lot of stuff on our earlier albums about the the hulto people the people who live in the in the rocks uh the gray people were sort of like um kind of like ghost elves or something like that and and then there's the nikur from the last album which is is this kind of being that lives in in the lake and transforms itself into something to lure people into the lake and and stuff like that it's that's a very common yeah so th those are those are at least uh, some of my my uh very uh yeah kind of favorite <laughs> favorite myths so do you have a favorite song on the album yeah it's a good question I, they're so different that's the thing it's it's really difficult to pick out um uh, one specific one because there's a really kind of soft uh ballad and then there's this like monstrous harsh impenetrable funeralish doom song um which shouldn't really work but i think somehow in the <laughs> album's context I, I i'm quite happy with how it still works together but but those two are kind of really nice contrasting songs the 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 song called glama number four and the song called kvalia number seven i i like I like how those oppose each other, but no, I I, I like all the, all of the songs just as well. It's like kids, you know. They always say songs are like kids, and it's kind of like that. But yeah, I guess maybe an underdog would be the number two the song, number two, Reachin, which is a little bit of an odd song, and it has this kind of cool switch between uh, four and six time, and and uh, yeah, I. I and it has this really interesting uh, kind of uh, psalm-like uh, chorus, which I really like. So I'm very, very interested to see how people are going to like that specific song. Yeah. Well, thanks for pronouncing those because I probably would have butchered all of them. <laughs> <laughs> so I have one question for you. Is there any yeah. like um, message you would like to give your current fans, your old fans, anyone that's just interested in listening to the album? Well, um, of course, plenty of stuff to say, but I think uh, really right now we would, would just really appreciate any feedback, any any thoughts, and what people feel uh, when they hear these songs. That that's like, you know, that's the most important thing. Um, also, we really want to try to make touring work and gigging in different places as many places as possible also uh, a big dream to come to the states but it's it's always kind of a challenge to 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 see how what works out but uh, we're doing our very best to get around as much as we can and hopefully people will show up and see us well thank you for that and we are here if you want to come visit we have a huge country if you want cold hot desert whatever you want <laughs> We have. Thanks. I I was actually just in Florida for uh, for a few weeks because I uh, I played with my other band on uh, the seventy thousand tons of metal cruise, um, which uh, yeah we took to from 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 Miami to Dominican Republic. That was quite an experience. So that was my well my my second trip to the states, but my first like real visit where I was there for quite a few days driving around and enjoying Florida. So I, I've experienced the hot part, I, I guess, even though it was in winter, but I'd love to go pretty much everywhere in, in the States. And where are you based, by the way? Um, I'm in Tennessee. Oh, nice. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. So love to go there too. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for taking your time to interview with me and drive safe, get to where you're going. And I listen to the album. I think it's great. I think people are going to be super excited when they listen to it. Thanks so much. Yeah. All right. Take care. You too.